And as we continue on Hannity, emotions are running very high in the wake of last week's deadly Boston Marathon bombing. And over the weekend, New York State Senator Greg Ball found himself in a little bit of hot water for suggesting that the authorities should torture the suspect that was taken into custody. He posted a tweet which read, in quote, well, so well, blank expletive number two is in custody. Who wouldn't use torture on this punk to save more lives? Joining me now, lawmaker from the Empire State who post posted that, New York State Senator Greg Ball. Uh, how are you? Welcome back. Really well. Blessed. Well, I don't even think you have to. I don't believe enhanced interrogation is torture. I don't. We only waterboarded three people. Right. Most people don't know that. And it was done under very strict guidelines, very limited amounts of time. Right. Medical supervision was there. Everyone forgets that part of it. And they say, oh, we right. torture, torture. And, and Obama advanced that narrative. But enhanced interrogation, sleep deprivation, loud music. By the way, many of our own troops and intelligence officials Absolutely. go through. They train. Right. They all train. Ali North was waterboarded as part of his training. So are you saying more enhanced interrogation or? You know, this this is what I said. And, you know, even Alan Dershowitz has, uh, you know, what a, what a great name. But, you know, he, he even agrees to the ticking bomb theory that yeah. if you can save uh, innocent American lives uh, in those instances, that those enhanced tactics are indeed uh, would, would be called for and, and, and could be used. And, you know, this is a lot of politicians are full of crap. Uh, they refuse to say what they really believe because, oh, my God, if I said what I really believe, I may not get reelected again. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, maybe this isn't a good part of my, you know, reelection strategy, but it's it's from my heart in saying get the answers. we save an we, innocent American What does life, he know? Right. We need to right. know what he knows. Right. I'm angry about this, this Mirandizing that went on here. Right. Uh, let me give you an example. I was watching last week, and it was this period of time when everybody in Watertown was told, go in your house and close your doors. Now, I lived in Rhode Island for five years of my life, and every time I go into Massachusetts, mandatory one-year jail sentence if you have a gun. Most people in Watertown, I would tell you, because gun laws are so strict, they don't have guns. So they're told to go into their homes. There's a terrorist with bombs and guns walking around your neighborhood. I'm thinking, Gubbins, you're a sitting duck. Sean, it's really scary That's, if you look at what's happening in politics today. And I, and I think that people from various sides of the spectrum are looking at it. We're in these 30-second responses. And if you look at the legislation that's passed, look at, look at Cuomo's gun. I was gun, locked in my house. Yeah, I have seven bullets in my gun. Look at Cuomo's gun legislation. They just rammed down our throats. Yeah. We have retired law enforcement who are now criminals. We have active duty military who are criminals. The New York Stock Exchange, other critical infrastructure in New York State, those private security guards have been turned into criminals. Listen to Diane Feinstein on this issue. about What are the poor people supposed to do? There's a terrorist in your backyard, terrorist in the neighborhood. He's on the loose. We don't know where he is. Just lock your door. And by the way, don't come out of your house. Right. And if you don't have a gun, how do you defend yourself if he walks into your house? Watch this. Would people like to have had guns? Oh, some may have, yes. But if where you're going is do they need an assault weapon, I don't think so. As the vice well, president they have the said, right to, well, shouldn't they have the right to decide whatever weapon they feel they need to protect themselves? Well, how about a machine gun then? Uh, we did away with machine guns because of how they're used. I think we should do away with assault weapons because of how they're used. Semi-automatics, sure. that's the most popular and rifle in America. you could use a 12-gauge shotgun and have uh, a good defensive effect. And there's the element of surprise. Now, you've got police all over the place in Watertown. Um, so I, I don't really think that this is applicable. I think there are people that want to make this argument. She is clueless. Show, As the show, vice president you know, is clueless. For, for, for a U.S. senator to compare the effectiveness of a, of a modern sporting rifle to a 12-gauge shotgun shows that she's a complete idiot on this issue. She doesn't know the front end of a white-tailed deer from the back end of a thoroughbred horse. Take a look. She's the one introducing legislation yeah. affecting legal law by sports. You ought to take gun. a look online on YouTube of, of some people shooting shotguns that'll sure. boom right back up. I, I would and, not and want to shot it. You don't have that kick. I, I Interesting. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have terrorists knocking on my door and have to protect that. Only with a 12 gauge shot. I, I wouldn't. Version. Listen, I, I got to get out of New York. Only seven bullets in my gun. I mean, this city, this state is taking people's rights away left and right. All right. Um, I want these guys. I want them found as you do. I think this was a big mistake we made tonight. It's, uh, Sean, it's scary where this country is going. I hope that good Americans use this as a wake up call uh, and, and realize that uh, if this is the new norm, we better wake up. All right. Uh, Senator, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it.